Dee Dee Moore is on this week's episode of the Cool Grandpa Podcast. We are going to sit down and talk about the many ways that she has provided resources to help new parents and new grandparents really build a strong foundation for a future that's meant to really encourage grandchildren. You are going to enjoy this conversation, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. This is your host, Greg Payne, coming at you from Studio 12. This podcast is about being the best possible grandpa you can be, focusing on what it is to be a grandpa and how we can all share that experience together for our grandchildren. Before we get started, I just wanted to remind everybody, if you happen to use Stitcher, for your podcast application on your smartphone or even your desktop, that application is going away. So be sure to migrate this podcast as well as your other podcast over to something else, whether it's iTunes or Google, Spotify, whatever that is. Make sure that you go in and move those podcasts over. Otherwise, in about a couple months, you're going to lose all of that when Stitcher goes away. The other thing I want to remind you about is my children's book is for sale on my website, cool-grandpa.us. And that book, My Grandpa's Grandpa, has now won two awards and is just a fun conversation starter to get people talking about their ancestors and where we came from and, and the experiences that your relatives had as you connect with your grandchildren. So be sure to go over to cool-grandpa.us and look for that book. Finally, I want to talk about some of the exciting things that are coming up. We've got Grandparents Week coming up at Grandparents Academy that I am honored to be a part of. So we'll provide a link for that in the show notes. And I also wanted to talk to you as well to remind you to go and check out Dee Dee Moore's website, More Than Grand. It is packed with great resources for parents and grandparents. In fact, without further ado, we're going to jump into that conversation with Dee Dee and learn more about More Than Grand. Welcome, Dee Dee, to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. I'm excited to have you on to talk to us again about More Than Grand and especially some of the important products that you have that will really help parents and newer grandparents, let's say, connect and really build a strong bond. So thank you for showing up this evening. Oh, thank you for inviting me, Greg. I always love coming and and talking to you and talking about how we can help grandparents have the relationships they want. One of the big things that I love about More Than Grand is a little bit of the focus on the newer grandparents and that newer role that we all find ourselves in through, you know, We have a little bit to do with it, but not a whole lot. But we get to enjoy so much of the fruits of watching our adult children go through the process of being parents. I'd love for you to talk to us a little bit more about More Than Grand and and the background on how it all got started. Well, I would love to. I, I started More Than Grand after I'd been a grandparent for a couple of years. And I realized that there just wasn't a website that, A, focused on new grandparents and be focused on how important the role of grandparent was. There were most of the grandparenting websites that I found really focused on how fun it was to be a grandparent, um, focused on activities or else they were grandparent sites, but were really lifestyle sites that had articles on, on all sorts of things. And I really wanted to focus hard on resources for new grandparents who wanted to be good partners to their adult children as they raised their children. Um, so it's been great. We've we've created a lot of wonderful resources and we we really have a lot for those new grandparents. Whether they they have a question about what the best way to, you know, announce the birth of their first grandchild is or if they want help with how to handle holiday stress. So all the things that that come up in those first few years of grandparenting we try to cover. Oh, that's that's great. And it's it's so important because most of us just grow up with the either the role models that we have in the way things have been done before 
or we're just completely feeling our way through the whole situation. Maybe our grandparents passed away when we were real young. We didn't have any kind of modeling. And so I think what's great with More Than Grand is that you're providing a little bit of a roadmap. And it may sound a little bit more technical than the fun, let's bake <laughs> sugar cookies and you know put icing on the cake and the, all that, but it's important, right? And and so many of us need a little bit of a roadmap or a prompt or or some instruction, let's say. Absolutely. And one of the things that has really changed is the parenting landscape. Parenting today is a lot different than it was when we were parents. Young parents have so many sources of information and so many experts out there to tell them the best way to do this, the best way to do that. They have a lot more decisions to make than we did when we were parents, and they're under a lot of stress. So as a grandparent today, we can't exactly rely on the models that we had when we were parents. It's we have to we have to navigate this new parenting landscape with them. And I try really hard to provide the resources that will help grandparents navigate that well. Do you find that you're seeing that a lot of the grandparents are starting to get frustrated with some of the changes that are going on with the parenting? Because there's there's things that have definitely popped up, uh, such as one example would be gentle parenting. Which right. was it? Gentle parenting meant that you got the the kick in the shorts instead of you know <laughs> something else when when I was growing up and misbehaving and so absolutely yeah some of those things are really hard for grandparents to understand and and it's even harder for them to un, to respect sometimes because it is such a shift and it feels like. It feels like they're being told that you you were wrong, you did things the wrong way, and this is the right way, and this is what I'm going to do. So there's a little bit of of a, a blow to the ego in there too when when your adult children are raising your grandchildren differently than you did. And you know, gentle parenting is definitely one of those things. And it's 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 important though for grandparents to learn about what's new and read the research as to why these things are, parents are embracing these new methods. There's a lot of good information out there. And I think it's really important for grandparents to seek that information out rather than relying on the parents to have to educate them about everything. Oh, sure. Well, and also too, one of the things that's great is being able to get the information versus even talking to your other grandparent friends. Because as we're all comparing notes, we're hearing things secondhand. We saw half an article. Well, doctor's offices don't even have magazines anymore. But <laughs> right. You, you know what I mean? Like you might have caught a headline here or there or something along those lines. So having the information and having resources is great. Absolutely. And I, I try really hard through the More Than Grand blog and, and some of the other resources to provide that information to grandparents so they can find it easily and in a, you know, easy to digest um, format and, and get the information they need. One of the things that I, I definitely wanted to, to ask you about is how do you feel that the adaptation of some of this change is going on? Because we're at a stage where I think things are a little bit blended, meaning we Generation X is coming into being grandparenting while the the baby boom generation are certainly there, but they're also starting to fade, fade out is not the right word, but the grandchildren of the baby boomers are older than the grandchildren of the Gen X crowd. That that Absolutely. would be Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, there's that's that's a big shift in the grandparenting landscape. It's it's not the all the baby boomers anymore. And uh and I, you know, it's the, the, the baby boomer grandparents are being diluted by the Gen X ones that are joining them. And I think that as that happens, you're going to have more and more grandparents who are looking for that information, who are searching the Internet when they don't know what's going on with what their children are doing. So I think that as the Gen X grandparents become a larger and larger percentage of the grandparenting population, you're going to have more of them looking for that information. Do you think some of it's going to be because of being more comfortable 
with internet, smartphones, things of that nature. Certainly there's there's baby boom generation that really developed all this technology, but sure. Gen X maybe being a little bit more open to it and as well as print magazines and print going away. Right, right. Actually, I just was one of my sisters said, oh my gosh, I just found some magazines in a closet I was cleaning out. I miss magazines. <laughs> so, you know, none of us, none of us use them anymore. But I think the difference between baby boomer, boomers and Gen X is Gen X has spent a larger portion of their life with the internet at their fingertips, with technology. Baby boomers certainly have embraced it and um, use it just as much. But I think there's just a reliance on it in most Gen Xers that baby boomers don't necessarily have. They see it as a great tool, but it, it's not as integral to what they do and how they spend their day as it is maybe to few later generations. How did you start to evolve more than grand from just being a blog site and an information site to starting to develop some really important and impactful products? Well, I just saw what a need there was for them. You know, there, it, if you ask parents if they'd like their parents to take a grandparenting class, they will say yes. Oh, yes, that would be wonderful if they could do that. But there aren't that many grandparenting classes out there. Some communities have them in the community center. Uh, some hospitals will offer a class, but they're really focused on baby care. They'll give you a little bit advice of advice about, you know, not giving advice, but there, there's not a lot of depth to them. And I just saw that there were parents needed grandparents to be more informed about these new things like body autonomy and baby led weaning and the the latest safety recommendations, which have evolved a whole lot since I had my children. So all of those things that really help you be a grandparent who is ready to be helpful from day one are included in, um, at least included in New Grandparent Essentials, which is which is my digital course. And it's just a PDF download that's really, really clear with the sections on baby care and safety and new parenting trends and and how to talk with parents um, about and what to talk to parents about um, when the, that baby is new. And there's also a section on setting a grandparent vision statement, because one of the things that really makes the difference between a grandparent who has a big impact on their grandchildren and one who just really is a lot of fun to hang out with is going into it with intention. And so there's a section in New Grandparent Essentials that covers how to set a grandparenting vision statement and then what to do with it once you've done that. Well, do you find that the the grandmother's vision statement is drastically different from the grandfather's? Or do you find that they, they actually do, maybe they're not the same, but they kind of start to fall in line together? Well, it's an interesting question because if I've actually had grandmothers come back to me and say, you know, I, oh, this was great. I did it. And my husband did his and we realized we were at odds. Like one of them thought that it would be ideal to take a family vacation every year with everyone. And the other one thought that it would be ideal to take care of all the kids while their adult kids got to go off by themselves. And they realized that those were pretty ex mutually exclusive goals. <laughs> so they realized that they needed to come to a grandparenting plan together. And um, they did. They found a great compromise. It really helped them to talk about those things. And this, this was a, a couple that had eight grandchildren already. So they'd been in the game for quite a while when they took, when they went through new grandparent essentials and, and they found a huge amount of value to, to their grandparenting experience. Well, and with that example that you provided, I can just imagine, I mean, with eight grandchildren, let's call it 10 years of some frustration, some miscommunication, some, you know, assumptions not being met, some expectations not being met on both sides. Not that anybody was out to get anybody, but no. all of a sudden you're, you you write these things down and you actually communicate it, it, it with grandma and grandpa get together. 
and forget about the kids part of it. It's it's okay. <laughs> grandma and grandpa now are going to have an easier time at home because they're a little bit more in sync. This year we're doing this. This year we're doing that. Exactly. Exactly. Communication is the key. Absolutely. And it's interesting how many times we we would think that by the time we're becoming grandparents, we would have figured that out. That <laughs> You know, between raising kids and going through life that it's like, oh, we need to be on the same page. Thursday nights, we're going to talk about the calendar. We're going to talk about what we want to do, you know, next month, whatever it is. Uh, no. We're, 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 we're still kind of the same, uh, folks we were when we were probably newly married for the most part. Exactly. What have been some of the other products that you've brought along and that you've been able to share with parents and grandparents? Well, a couple of the things, um, real quick, there's, and then I'll tell you about my new one. We have a set of grandparent love letter templates, which have been really popular. And it's just a set of 12 templates that help you write a letter to your grandchild each month. And it comes with tips for what to write about. And there's a different theme each month. So that's been really popular. A lot of lot of grandparents have enjoyed doing that, no matter what the age of the grandchild is. So that's available in the shop. And then um, at the holidays, and I, it's not there right now, but at the holidays, we have a grandparents guide to happy holidays, which is hugely helpful for dealing with all of the stress and misunderstandings that come up around the holiday season, um, because that seems to be a big one for for new families. And so we've we've developed some resources that that can help ease that stress. Oh, that's and then, uh, no, I was going to say that's that's great, because especially I can remember as my sons were married and we welcomed the daughter-in-laws into the family is trying to figure out what traditions they're bringing in. What are they looking for? What, what do, you know, how did your family celebrate the holidays and, and what are some things? Be, and I was doing that partly to look for what are some little things that I can do that can kind of remind them of home because we're at the stage now too, where it's, are we going here for for the holidays? Are we going there for the holidays? Are we, you know, you can't be in five different places at, at one time for, for these special events and these, these yearly things. So being able to go, Hey, did you guys do a low country boil as part of the holiday ex- experience? If so, I've, I've got to go get some old bay and some crabs. And, and, exactly. You know, let's do something like exactly. That. Those are the things that you may not think to talk, you know, to ask about. So it's it's important to have those conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it, it's been great to, to just learn about those different cultures as we welcome everybody into the families. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what what other products do you have, and, and do you have stuff that's new? So yeah, so the the latest thing that I've developed is a family family childcare agreement. Um, the the number of grandparents who provide regular childcare, whether it's one day a week, whether it's full time, whether it's you know one week out of the month, is huge. Uh, grandparents have always been a source of of childcare within families. Um, what's different now is that most grandparents have more demands on their time. Um, parents are more stressed out about parenting than in the past. And we're finding that there's just a lot of stress about that relationship. It's not as easy as dropping the kids off at grandma's house on your way to work. Parents are concerned about, you know, what are the kids going to be eating at lunchtime? And did is grandma getting her CPR up to date every year? On the grandparent side of that, grandparents are often making this commitment without realizing how taxing it's going to be. Um, maybe they don't, you know, maybe they agree to help, but they don't really realize how often they're going to be called upon. Um, maybe they say they're going to to help three days a week. And then they give up their volunteer job to do that. And they realize how much they miss that, that time, that social time and that the, the things that they get out of doing that. 
So we find that a lot of, of grandparents and parents are going into this without really talking about the things that they should talk about before making this agreement. And so we've developed a family child care agreement. Um, it covers all of the things that you should talk about, you know, from CPR to who provides meals. What are you going to do if grandma's the caregiver and she gets sick? Um, does she get time off? Does she get paid? I mean, there are grandparents that are, are, are really need the financial help. And if they're providing free child care, then many parents are willing to, to compensate for that, them for that. So it, it will cover all the things to talk about. It gives you the opportunity to fill in a little questionnaire to mark which things are important to your family. Cause some families, you know, this doesn't matter or, or, you know, they don't need to cover what's going to happen for meals because that's not going to be part of the day. And then it will spit out an agreement for you both to keep. I don't know that it's necessary for you to sign it. I don't, this is not a legally binding document. It's just an opportunity to make sure that you are on the same page about the arrangements that you're making. Well, and it's important to have these discussions because even as they might be uncomfortable for a new daughter-in-law to talk to the in-laws about something or son-in-law to talk to the, you know, however that conversation, or even talk to your parents and go, hey, mom and dad, as a couple, we want this. Right, right. Having a little bit of a primer to, to start that out is is always helpful. That way it it shouldn't be coming across like my son doesn't think I can possibly take care of a little kid. Somehow I managed right. to raise him and his brothers and you know, but now all of a sudden I don't know how to keep a little kid alive. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's one that's one point that I try to make to grandparents. You know, your kids really respect you. They love you. They they want to to have a good relationship with you most of the time. Obviously, there, there are families where that's an exception, but they are going to be seeking your approval. And they may not come to you with some of these things. They may not feel comfortable asking you about certain boundaries, to respect certain boundaries, but it's important, which is why it's important for grandparents to start the conversation. Even if your kids aren't coming to you and saying, I'd really like you to, you know, do this differently, or I'd really like it if you could start doing that, they may not feel comfortable doing that. And so as the grandparent, it's so powerful if you can go to them and say, hey, what can I do better? Is there anything that I'm doing that you'd like me to stop doing? Or, you know, how can I, how can I help you right now? Those are the kinds of questions that that foster that start conversations that are really great for fostering a strong relationship. Absolutely. And I think too it's important for grandparents to evaluate how this family care agreement's going because if you haven't taken care of little kids for a while, you love your grandkids, all that kind of good stuff. I'm going to confess something being around a bunch of little kids for day in and day out for a long period of time is going to make the cool grandpa really grumpy. <laughs> and exactly. It is, it's hard. And, and, and most of us have forgotten how hard it is. So it's, it's something that does need to be reassessed from time to time. It's one of the things too, like you said, is put some boundaries in place, right? It, it puts some things where, grandparents have their own lives and they should have their own lives that if yeah. if grandma needs to take off by 5 30 you have to have that agreement that you can't just show up at 7 30 at night expecting me to have dinner for them and for me to miss whatever my activity was absolutely yeah and and you know the the, the power of this is that it's putting boundaries in place for both sides right you you it's not a it's not just to make sure that the parents have everything they want out of the agreement. It's it's for both of you. Um, it's one of the top search terms that brings people to more than grand's website is grandparent burnout or exhausted looking after grandkids. Grandparents are just 
finding that it's harder than they remember and they they need some relief. So putting something in place to begin with so that you can have a great conversation should the time come when you just can't do it anymore is going to be really helpful to your relationship. And I oh, think too, God. by having this conversation first, it helps maybe get over some of the awkwardness and gets over some of the emotion with it, right? Because if I need to call up my daughter-in-law and go, look, I've had a rough day. He's having one of his days. I'm just, I, I can't watch him, you know, for the rest of this afternoon. you got to come get him. That's a really awkward conversation with a newer grandfather, a newer daughter-in-law, and, you know, a mom d- to have. And Absolutely. If you haven't had some of that awkwardness removed or you haven't gone through that before, boy, can that lead to a lot of assumptions on both sides of grandpa's not capable of watching, you know, the grandson or granddaughter. Right. Anyway, what I'm getting at is is getting over some of these these uncomfortable conversations early and having a format to do it, I think, is really valuable for that relationship. Absolutely. You know, it's one of the things that I I like to think more than Grand does is provides the the, the basis for those conversations that are really hard to have um, without a third an unbiased third party coming in and and providing some framework and some information. So I I try really hard to provide resources that will will help everybody in the relationship. That's great. Do you find that you've got more parents? finding the products and finding the information and then sharing it with the grandparents? Or do you find more grandparents, you think, finding this and then approaching the parents with it? I think it's, I think it's about 50-50. And I know that, you know, parents, parents are a little um, gun shy to come to you and say, here, I think you need to know more. Here's, here's something to tell you to be a better grandparent. Um, And that's not, that's not the, the purpose behind any of this. It's, it's, it's not to make you a better grandparent. It's to make you a more valuable grandparent. And everybody can use some help with that. Absolutely. And when you're going through that, I just was remembering sometimes it's easier to talk about the dog and dog sitting. And they get this and here's the time for this pill. And here's what they, you know, <laughs> like we, we're more comfortable talking about that than the children, right? The, the most, the more important part of this whole thing. That's such a great point, Greg. <laughs> How can people find out more about more than grand as well as some of these great products that you have that can get conversation started and get everybody into alignment? Absolutely. Visit morethangrand.com. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. There's, you know, there, there are a lot of places to find, find everything out there. It's all at more than grand. I know you'll probably have a link in the show notes to, to send people over there and, and uh, yeah, please come and explore what there is. In addition to the products in the shop, there is an awful lot of free information on there that, that will be of use to you. We'll not only put links to More Than Grand and the the coupon that you've generously provided for the listeners, but we'll also put a link into the conversation that we first had a year or so ago so that people can kind of refresh themselves. Because we did a little bit more of a deeper dive at that conversation about you, your experience, and More Than Grand than we have here. But uh, we want to make sure everybody has all the information resources available to them. Awesome. Well, is there anything about More Than Grand or the family care agreement that I I haven't asked you that you'd like to bring up? I don't think so. I think we've really covered it. And I, you know, I I do hope that people will see value in this. And um, if you're going to be taking care of your grandkids on a regular basis, I encourage you to, to go check it out. I really do appreciate you taking time this evening, Dee Dee, to sit down with us and to talk about these important ideas and and these important resources that you're offering to grandparents everywhere. So thank you so much. Thank you, Greg. What a fun conversation with Dee Dee. I really appreciated learning more about the products that she has at More Than Grand. And I've got links to More Than Grand in the show notes. 
And just so that you're aware, I have an affiliate relationship with Didi. And if you don't know what that means, it's simply that if you happen to purchase any of her resources using my affiliate link, I get a couple of dollars back for that. So it's a commission kind of thing. But I wanted to make sure that the audience knows that we do have that relationship on top of a friendship relationship. I'm also going to make sure that I put a link to our previous conversation in the show notes so that if you want, you can go back and we can really listen to Dee Dee's story about becoming a grandmother, how she started more than grand, as well as just more background information that you can use to help to get to know Dee Dee a little bit better as well as the mission of More Than Grand. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation. This was very informational, and I think it was really important that we share this information so that grandparents and parents know that there are resources out there focused on building strong foundations with new grandparents and new parents so that that relationship can continue to grow and develop over the years to be strong and meaningful for both parties. So, until next time, remember to stay cool. Thank you for listening to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do me a favor and share it with a friend. That's the best way you can help us to expand our community, as well as get the news out about how valuable grandpas are in the lives of those kids. If you'd like to leave me a comment or shoot me a potential topic for this uh, podcast, please go to www dot cool dash grandpa dot us look for the comments tab fill it up hit submit it's as easy as that until next time remember to stay cool